Okay, here we are with Floyd. Yeah. Giving me a little tour, showing me his. What year is this bike? 1967 Schwinn. 1967 Schwinn. You have a lock on that? Uh, no, I don't really need it. Nobody's going to touch it. Yeah. Really? The people know me. They don't touch anything mine. Yeah. How long have you been living here? Up and on three years. Three years. Up and on three years. Yeah, I know you were in New York for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in New York for a while. I went back to visit my daughter and stuff. And, but when I got that prognosis, it was less than 12 months to live. And my doctor, which I have in here, uh, I decided to come back here because this would be a place I want to die, you know. I, I just like it here. I didn't want to be back there, you know. So I'd rather be here, you know. And, so what was the diagnosis? Uh, because my AIDS virus is, is so extreme and my cancer is going haywire that, that they gave me less than 12 months to make it, you know. And, I, mean, I had that paper in here signed by my doctor and it really upset me, but I'm dealing with it, you know, and I'm not going to let it take me down. If anything, I'm moving forward, you know. I'm so have you uh, pursued any housing besides living here in Tent City? Uh, no, I haven't really, you know. Uh, I'm thinking about it, you know, because uh, my hep T is getting out of hand. They want me to start to interfere on treatment, you know, and it has to be someplace stable uh, out of the weather, you know, uh -huh. in order to do that, you know. So, yeah, I'm looking, I'm going to start looking for something different. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Hey, you want to come inside? My yeah, well, let me take a look. Yeah, you got a light on that so you can... <laughs> I don't think it's going to work, but... It's a really neat setup. Just all my... So you don't think you'll take one of these cots that are... No, well, when you see this, you'll know why. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is my... All my food and everything. And I have so you've got uh, plastic milk crates underneath that yeah. you're sleeping on top of? Milk crate, see? Milk crates, and then you have what on top of that? Skin. Oh, that's nice. I got my sheepskin. I got my sleeping bag. I got my, my blankets, uh, my pillows, and everything. This isn't bad. Good book. Everything I'm reading, all my food. I keep everything on my food and everything, and uh, everything behind that. And, uh, I love bananas. I get a lot of it. Well, yeah, stuff. and on top of it, they're, they're good for you. They have potassium content. It's really extreme, you know, so I like that, you know. I keep everything together. You set that up nice, Floyd. Right? Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, I think I got set up really well. It's very comfortable. I can just go in or I sit out here and read a book. But I read a lot. I read a lot. It, it's really good, you know. I don't watch TV. I don't believe in TV. Really? But, yeah, I don't care for it, you know. It's, it's too distracting. It takes away from the now anyway, so I like reading, you know. And, so uh, how are you finding living here in this group of 100 people? It's okay, it's stressful at times because yeah. we get some bad seeds. Yeah. They create a lot of problems, and which, you know, yeah, most of them we, we get it out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, the older ones that are here, they're, they're, they're like me. They're just, they do their own thing and they just keep to themselves and don't bother anybody, you know? And we, that works out good. But the younger ones who get in here, they think they, they know all this and that. And, uh, so you're retired from the Air Force? No, from the airport. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, San Francisco Airport. I worked there 17 years, and I retired. And uh, I've been living on my pension. I get $3,800 a month for my pension, you know, plus Social Security. And it uh, works out pretty good. Yeah, it works out good, you know. My daughter, I live back in New York, my stepdaughter. I send her money each month, you know. So I can live here and not have to worry about it too much. You know, I can help her because an apartment back there, just the SRO, single little single room with a sink in it, and the bed and the dresser is starting at a thousand a month and that's in a shabby building you gotta share the bathroom with like 10 12 other people in she lives right in manhattan no in brooklyn oh okay yeah right across the bridge and uh yeah so she works at a little cafe part-time and goes to school she's 19 and she's doing really well i send her money each month to help her you know good for you yeah you know so yeah living here doesn't bother me you know so you like seattle much more than new york yeah Definitely. The people are a lot nicer here. Good. Yeah, in New York, people are just like, if you don't know them, don't say hi to them because they, uh, they can cause a bad problem. Yeah. I've been there once. I almost got beat up one time. Yeah, I said hi. Good morning. This one guy, he went off the wall ballistic and you know, almost beat me up because I didn't know him and he didn't know me, you know. Well, whatever. Wow. Yeah, they got serious attitudes. It's like, oh, excuse me. I said something wrong, you know. Hmm. I tried to walk, walk, I was actually trying to walk away from him, get away from him, and he kept following me like he was going to really beat me up. I thought I meant a threat to him or something, but I was just being courteous, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah well, I'm glad to be back here. I am. 
Yeah, my good. doctor was happy to see me. And, and uh, so you feel you're getting good medical care here? Excellent. That's a, I go to Virginia Mason. And good. I, uh, the infectious disease unit on Seventh Port. That's a good, right? Good place to be. If anybody needs good treatment and service, go there. Don't go to Harvard View because it's not good. Uh -huh. I know I've been there before. Uh, Virginia Mason is the best place I know of. Their treatment's good, the doctors are good, and they really do care. And they'll give you everything you need no matter what it is. Wow. And they tell you the truth about it, but they don't try to hide anything from you, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, everything's going good, you know. Good, well, it's good. Back to Amy, it's good. You know? I've been having certain issues, but, you know, my heart's been bothering me a lot. I, I take nitroglycerin uh -huh. for it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was born with my... Uh, uh, organs, they're called displaced organs or something like that. Uh huh. I don't yeah, know. My heart is over here. Wow. Uh, yeah, my heart is underneath my, my left armpit. It's actually right there. That's where my Holy heart is moly. located. Yeah, my heart's right there. You know, it's not where it's supposed to be, it's over here. That's where my heart is, you know. Wow. It's really wicked, huh? Yeah, but I was born <laughs> I've like heard that. Yeah, I was born like that. So, yeah, my heart's right there. It's underneath my left armpit. Kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a freak of nature, I guess. I <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember a couple of years ago I brought some kids through here on a tour? Yeah. And you yeah. were their tour guide? Oh, yeah, I love that. Boy, I that was fun, huh? I love kids, man. That yeah. was fun. Yeah, yeah, I told you. Every time we do a tour, they always call me to do them. Yeah. You know? Kimmy and the kids get along great, and the parents, too. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll see if we can't do some, um, some outreach around HIV AIDS. Yeah, you know, and like I said, whatever I can do to help your program, yeah. to help you get going, or book your writing, whatever any information you need, or whatever, any knowledge I have inside of me, I can share with you. I'd be more than happy to. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, man. That'd I'm be cool great. With it. Serious. All just, right. Yeah, it's okay to use this video? Yeah. Yes, All right. Yeah, might I, put it on YouTube, might put it on my website. Okay, cool. That's yeah, okay? I've, yeah, like I said, I've had AIDS for 18 years plus, and uh, I've learned a lot about it. All right. Every well, that'd be great because there's still a lot of misinformation. Oh, yeah, there is. And, uh, um, you know what we're really focusing on is talking to young people, uh -huh. businesses, church groups, whatever, uh -huh. about the loneliness and isolation around HIV AIDS. Yeah, that does create a lot of problems. And I can tell you about that side too because I've been that's down our, that path. That's our focus. The suicide and everything. We know, I try to take myself out a few times yeah. behind it. I sit quiet. I still do. Yeah. I sit yesterday. As a matter of fact, I did. I sat here. I started getting tear in my eye because I was thinking how lonely I am and just people don't want to be around me because I have it, you know? Right. As soon as they hear you have it, they venture off in another direction. Well, that's a, the you majority know, of stories I hear, and that's yeah. why we're, see, we're that's, doing this. If, if we're not yeah. going into schools, businesses, or anything talking about prevention so much. Right. The, the presentation I present is what can we do to help people that are lonely right. and isolated. Right. That's the important and part right there. They Not get, so much prevention because, yeah, one way or another, something may occur, but, yeah, why you have it, what can be done, you know, I mean, that, that loneliness, that's the part right there. You yeah. know, you get lonely and just sad and, and you feel like, well, yeah, I think about it sometimes, but it gets me. I deal with it, you know. 